Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories you are tracking for you. Indian Air Force inducts indigenously built light combat helicopter. MQM stages protest in London against atrocities on Mohardis in Pakistan. And we'll never give up on lessons, says sister of Afghan teen killed in tutoring center attack. And now for all the details, the Indian Air Force formally inducted the first Made in India multi-role light combat helicopters into its fleet at its Jodhpur base on Monday. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said it is the result of a two-decade long research and development and the induction is an important milestone in the country's journey of indigenous defence production. The Indian Air Force on Monday formally inducted the first indigenously developed multi-role light combat helicopters LCH named Prachand meaning fears into its fleet at its Jodhpur base in northwestern Rajasthan state. The induction ceremony was attended by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. The helicopters are capable of destruction of enemy air defence, performing counter-insurgency operations, combat search and rescue tasks. Of the 15 helicopters being procured from Defence Public Sector undertaking Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, 10 are for the IAF and 5 for the Indian Army. Rajnath Singh said the Air Force had to depend on foreign origin attack helicopters for a long time and the need for indigenous technology was much felt during the 1999 Kargil War. The Prachand is a result of two decade long research and development since then and its induction is an important milestone in India's journey of indigenous defense production, he said. For 1999, in the research and development of the LCH and Indian Air Force, its induction is an defense production ki raah mein ek important milestone. Hai. The defense minister also took a sortie in the helicopter after the induction. The LCH has a narrow fuselage because of the tandem cockpit configuration for the pilot and the co-pilot gunner and has several stealth features including armor protection, night attack capability and landing gear during crash. It is also an effective asset to counter slow moving aircraft and remotely piloted aircraft and can be deployed in high altitude bunker bursting operations and counter-insurgency operations. Meanwhile, the Indian Air Force said on Monday that it had scrambled fighter jets after receiving information of a bomb scare on an airline bearing Iranian registration transiting to China through Indian airspace. The Air Force said it later received information from Iran's capital Tehran to disregard the bomb scare and the Mahan air passenger flight continued its journey. In a statement, the Indian Air Force said the jets followed the aircraft at a safe distance and it was offered the option to land at two airports. However, the pilot declared his unwillingness to divert to either of the two airports, the statement said. An Indian Air Force spokesman did not confirm the flight number for which fighter jets were scrambled. In 9.25 minutes, we had a fire control room that was going to the flight from Tehran to China, the Iranian Airways 081. There was a bomb scare. So, in the standing operating procedure, we had an assistant divisional officer with fire units to turn out. दस बज के पांच मिनट पर ऑल क्लियर का मैसेज हमें एयरपोर्ट सिक्योरिटी से प्राप्त हो गया जिसके बाद गाड़ियां हमारी वापस आ गई and news from Pakistan, the government hospital in Sehwan town in Pakistan's Sindh province has been overwhelmed with hundreds of people desperately seeking treatment for those suffering from malaria and other illnesses. Waterborne diseases are spreading fast in the aftermath of the worst floods in the country in decades. The emergency ward at the main government hospital in Sehwan, a small town in Sindh province in Pakistan, is overwhelmed with hundreds of people 
crammed into rooms and corridors, desperately seeking treatment for those suffering from malaria and other illnesses. Doctors were seen struggling to cope with the influx of patients arriving from miles around after towns and villages were submerged under water when heavy rains fell in August and September. Most of the estimated 300 to 400 patients arriving at the clinic each morning are suffering from malaria and diarrhea. Although with winter approaching, it is feared such illnesses will become more common. Stagnant floodwaters spread over hundreds of square kilometers may take two to six months to recede in some places and already they have led to widespread cases of skin and eye infection apart from waterborne diseases. This is 400 plus malaria which we do a test and we can't do a test because we wait for the test and we know what the symptoms are because we know what the symptoms are and what they are. There are three symptoms. We will go to the hospital for two months. We are standing in 10-12 feet in the hospital. We are standing here. We are all worried. We are all worried. We are all worried. Hundreds of thousands of Pakistanis who fled their homes are living in government camps set up to accommodate them or simply out in the open. More than 1,660 people have been killed in flooding caused by heavy monsoon rains and melting glaciers. Pakistan estimates the cost of the damage at 30 billion US dollars and the government and United Nations have blamed the catastrophe on climate change. Moving on, members of the Mutahida Qawmi movement, MQM, staged a protest outside the British Prime Minister's residence in London this past weekend to demand intervention to stop atrocities against the Muhajir community in Pakistan. They also demanded removal of ban on their political activities and on speeches of MQM founder leader Altaf Hussain in Pakistan. Members of the Mutahida Qawmi movement, MQM, staged a demonstration over the past weekend outside the British Prime Minister's residence in London to demand intervention to stop human rights violations against the Muhajirs in Pakistan. The demonstrators highlighted state atrocities against the MQM, a mainstream political party of the Muhajirs, including the recent killing of three MQM workers and the enforced disappearance of former member of parliament, Nisar Panwar, in Pakistan. They also demanded removal of ban against MQM founder leader Altaf Hussein's speeches in Pakistan. A delegation also handed over an SOS petition to office of British PM Liz Truss, appealing her to use her influence to stop the rights violations. Pakistan में हुकूमतें वो इस जुल्म का हिस्सा बनी हुई हैं, अदालतें वो इंसाफ देने के बजाय वो इंसाफ मांगने वालों पर होने वाले मजालिम को उनकी आवाज सुनने के लिए तैयार नहीं हैं। MQM has dominated Pakistan's largest city Karachi's politics since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Hussein sought asylum in the United Kingdom. Even from exile in London, Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. Well, in news from Afghanistan, the recent blast in Kabul at a private tutoring center has come as a setback for young women seeking an education against already difficult odds since the Taliban seized power last August. The sister of a girl among those killed said that she would never give up on lessons and will continue her studies. The sister of a girl killed in a blast at a private tutoring center in Kabul said on Sunday that she would never give up on lessons. It is a very painful scene but we will continue with the lessons and will never give up or stop, said Asya Asghari, whose 17-year-old sister Um Albanin was among at least 19 people killed in a suicide attack last Friday during a practice exam in the girls' section of a packed room at Kaj Education Institute. Albanin's father, Haji Mir Ahmed, said his daughter wished to become a president or lawyer so that she could serve Afghans. 
واقعا نگران هستیم سخت است بر ما مکاتب کلا بسته شدن برای دخترها مرکز آموزشی هم خود دیروز تنها نه ام البنی نمشیره ما بلکه سمیرا و همچنان زهرا و یه گارد کورس طاهر اینا اوز فامیل ما می شدن چون به خاطر محافظت از ما در کورس خدمت می کردن و شهادت رسیدن خیلی صحنه دردناک است اما باز ما ادامه می دهیم به درس خود و هیچ وقت کلمه به نام تسلیم وجود نداریم به نام توقف Residents of the West Kabul neighborhood home to minority Shiite Hazaras who had family members, friends and neighbors killed, injured and severely emotionally shaken described a violent setback for young women seeking an education against already difficult odds. Afghan Hazara women and civil rights activists held demonstrations in Kabul over the weekend to condemn the attack. Girls secondary schools have been closed in most provinces including Kabul since the Taliban took over the country. In August 2021, private tutoring centers such as Kaj have provided a lifeline to girls wanting to further their education and a chance to ascend to universities where women are still allowed though they face increased restrictions and growing economic challenges. While no group has so far claimed responsibility, the Taliban said they would find the perpetrators and bring them to justice. And moving on to news from Nepal, residents in Nepal's Lalitpur are observing a five-day long festival known as Sikali Jatra, dedicated to goddess Shikali. A section of the ethnic Nevar community celebrates the Jatra's festival, which coincides with the Dishan festival. Locals in Khokana, a medieval Nevari heritage village in Lalitpur in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley, are observing a five-day long festival known as Sikali Jatra, which is dedicated to Goddess Shikali, also known as Ajima or Mother Goddess. A section of the ethnic Nevar community celebrates the Jatra festival, which is somehow related to the Shine festival, as the Nevari community sacrifices three buffaloes on the third day of the festival. The festival starts with a procession during which idol of Goddess Rudraini, another name for Shikali, is carried in a wooden chariot throughout the village and rested in front of the temple along with various religious copper vessels. The Jatra witnesses tantric rituals along with masked dancers in colorful attire, representing 14 gods and goddesses of the Hindu pantheon. <laughs> जो तीन वटा कुटिया बाटा चाहिए, तीन वटा चोको रंगो चाहिए, जो डेस बाइर चाहिए, कार्स, जो चाहिए टेटी को रूप में ही कार्स। दसवीं बने के आम्रो खोकना बाटो सोलो उनसे बन्धा, आम्रो जमरा मात्रा ना रखने हो, और दसवीं पनी चाहिए, टेटी टेटी मारे को अवसर में ही मने रहे हो, या आम्रो चाहिए। and also it is regarded as an occasion for the farmers to rejoice in post-harvest season. The Jatra ends on the day of Fulpati, which centers on the patron deity. And the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, on Monday began a three-day teaching session for around 400 Taiwanese Buddhist followers in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. The Dalai Lama has lived in exile in Dharamshala since 1959, where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, began a three-day teaching session for Taiwanese Buddhist followers in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala on Monday. Around 400 Taiwanese followers, along with monks, nuns, locals and foreign participants gathered at the main Buddhist temple as he spoke on Chapter 2 of Dharmkriti's commentary on valid cognition. A follower from the United States said it is a blessing to hear what the Dalai Lama has to say. I am so honored to be here because I am so inspired by the Dalai Lama and all of his teachings are like amazing so that's why I am here. The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He has since lived mostly in the northern hill town where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.